Okay, this video is part of a series. Hope you watched the previous ones. We're going through uh, the 2018 Google Capture, Capture the Flag. Uh, and again, um, I came across this by watching Live Overflow and John Har uh, Hammond. I don't know why I always say his name wrong the first time. John Hammond uh, on YouTube. Check out their channels. They're awesome. Again, you can go to gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000 forward slash capital uh, CTF. Uh, and there you can get all my scripts that I'm working on this. I'm trying to automate uh, all these as much as possible. This one actually automates it most of the way for you. You're going to have to do a little bit of work. Um, we're going to get into using DOSBox and its debugger for this particular project here. We're actually going back uh, over to, where is it? There's Floppy, Floppy 2. Uh, so, in the previous one, uh, we downloaded a, a attachment, which is a zip file. We extracted. There was an icon file in it. We used binwalk to extract a file from it. There was a text file in there, which was the, path, uh, the, the flag that we needed. And then there was also a uh, .com file, and it said www.com, which is not www.com, uh, which is actually the first place I went. And just because they named it that, it was kind of confusing. And I started looking at the source code for this page, and then I realized it was because... If I go to it, let's uh, let's see here. Do I have? Um, let me go ahead and real quick I'm into my script here, and I will download that file. Oops. So we'll download that, unzip that, which gives us the icon file, and then I can. Uh, bin walk through it, bin walk dash e to extract everything from that foo icon, and then we can if we list out everything inside the underscore foo dot icon dot extracted, we can see that there's a www.com file, and what threw me off is because I did a file on it, like this, which tells me what file type it is, and it just says that it's an ASCII uh, text, so I didn't even really look in it at first. Uh, with the first project, you didn't really need it. Uh, if I do the same thing, I can cat it out, and there's some gibberish, what seems to be gibberish, and then some plain text here. Um, and if for some reason it wasn't, I, just, I think it's just because they threw me off because of the www. Uh, I, I know this uh, dot, uh, .com uh, is basically the same thing, uh, I'm sure technically there's probably some differences, uh, as a dot .exe on a Windows system. Uh, if you go into your, if you're on a Windows machine, go into Windows uh, folder, uh, Sys32, uh, there will be a bunch of .com files in there. Uh, command.com uh, is one that comes to mind. Um, and most of those, uh, if I, if it's, it's been a while since I really played with them. Like .coms can be renamed .exe, but not the other way around. But basically, they're executables. They're usually uh, binary. I don't know why when I uh, run file on this, it's telling me it's an ASCII text file. That was That's interesting. Now I want to learn more about .com files. But in general, they're just a Windows or DOS executable. Um, I don't really think... I think the .com files on a Windows system are probably just old files that are still there. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, but I think they were more common back... You know, it's .com, it's short for command. Uh, anyway, so what you can do is I had DOSBox installed on my machine. DOSBox... Uh, and I can give it that file. Oh, I, I got out of the folder I was in. Uh, floopy, floppy to uh, DOS box. And if you give DOS box a file, it will automatically mount that the folder that that file is in as a C drive and try to run it. So uh, we should be able to do this. There we go. So it ran it, and basically that program. Uh, just outputs this text message, which we saw when we, you know, just catted out the file. So that doesn't help us any, but it doesn't show the gibberish in there. So what we need to do is use DOSBox debugger. And normally what you would do is in here, you would type in uh, debug and dot www.com and hit enter. Again, the little command. Another thing is to run the command and hit alt uh, pause on your keyboard. Uh, which doesn't uh, really do anything for me here. And that's because uh, DOSBox, 
in, in most cases, like this I got at, from using uh, sudo apt install, so it came from the Debian repositories, it doesn't have the debugger built in by default because most people don't need it. So what you need to do is recompile it with the debugger. Uh, so if we look in here, let me real quick just clean up uh, you know, stuff I just did because we don't need all that. Um, Oh, that's directory, so we need to do this. Okay, uh, so I have my floppy code here. So that's what that will do is download, uncompress, extract that file, and then run the DOSBug debugger, which I actually have compiled DOSBox here in this folder uh, for you uh, already with a debugger in it. So it's actually under if I do uh, DOSBox, that you know that folder if I do I have to dot slash that. Uh, uh, src for source and then do dosbox I'm running that copy of dosbox and you can see the background here in my original shell is different that's because that's the debugger output uh, so let me go ahead and just exit out of this uh, if and of course it's compiled for my system so if you're running a Linux 64-bit uh, uh, processor that should probably work for you but if you're running on some other architecture you might need to recompile it so I actually uh, made a script here called make DOS box, which you can run. Uh, all it does is, uh, you know, I set this up for a Debian based system. Uh, it's going to install, as far as I know, these are the only dependencies you need. You need GC GCC, which is the compiler, make, and then you also need ncurses because that's what it does. It uses for um, the output in the background there uh, in the main shell here. Uh, so then I download a, the source code for DOSBox, uh, which can get to different places. I'm very leery about downloading applications uh, and compiling them and executing them on my machine. Uh, I trust the DOS, DOSBox people, but I also want to make sure I got it from a server I trust. So I'm actually using uh, a Debian server here, just pulling it from that. You could actually set up apt. Uh, or apt to or apt to get to pull down source code. Uh, I know you can you can do that. I haven't really looked into that, but I just quickly Googled where they pull the packages from. This is one of the options. I download it, I extract it, I remove the original, uh, then I move into the DOSBox folder we just extracted. The first thing you need to do is run autogen, which actually should have, let me fix my script here real quick. That should be dot slash autogen. So when you extract it, if we move into our DOS uh, folder here, our DOS box folder here, there's a file called Autogen. You've got to run that first. And then you want to run .config, but not just .config or dot, uh, it's actually .configure. Um, if again, if we cat out my uh, make DOS box file here, you actually need to say configure uh, dash dash enable debugging equals heavy. So you do this, that runs real quick. You do this, that runs real quick. And then you run make. And make. Uh, the first time you go to compile it, it's probably going to take, it took my system one or two minutes, not too long, and then you can run the DOS box with the debugger. Once you do that, uh, so let me go ahead and run my floppy, which, uh, my floppy script, which assumes you're going to use that already compiled version uh, of DOS box. So we're going to run that, extracts it, and here I'm giving you a message. Once DOS box uh, is run, press alt pause then in this window not the DOS box window use the down arrow keys until you see the flag and that's it so this script is mostly automated you're gonna to have to do a little manual and stuff so I'm gonna hit enter it's gonna continue so now it has run our www.com command I'm gonna hit alt pause and that pauses DOS box I'm not gonna drag this over here so it's not in the way this is our debugger back here, back in our original window. Uh, on my system, it looks kind of messed up. Uh, I found that if I just resize the font in my shell, everything goes fine. So you can see down here, uh, you got here, you got this, basically it's a hex editor viewer of basically the memory of DOSBox that, while well, it's running here. And to scroll through this, you use page up and page down. Then it looks like here, like it's uh, giving you some, um, uh, assembly code. Uh, you can use your arrow keys to go through this. Uh, and if you understand assembly, that might help. Uh, and then you can also type commands down here. If I just type help, it's going to um, add it down here. And then I can use my, my right here to scroll on this section, use uh, your home and end key so I can hit 
end or home to go through this. So you see, I already typed help and it gave me this little help output here. Uh, but, but all we need to do is press down page and you can see we're scrolling through here. So basically we started DOS box, we ran our command and then uh, alt pause to pause it. And now we're in the debugger and we're looking at the RAM of the machine that's been captured. And I'm just gonna hold down down page, I'm gonna keep going, keep going, keep going. We're going to see um, our www.com uh, wording a few times here. You know what, uh, I probably, there might be extra stuff here because I didn't hit alt pause right away. So there might be more stuff in RAM because I don't think I normally go down this far, but let's just keep going. Okay, yeah, here we go. We're getting to the www. Oh, so right here. Uh, I wish I knew, I don't know much about this debugger. This is the first time I've used it. I tried looking through the help for a search feature because it'd be nice if you could just search and then search uh, CTF. Um, but I didn't see a search feature. But basically copy this and paste it and then come here and copy and paste this at the end into the Google website and you have your flag. So this one I wasn't able to completely, oops, completely um, uh, automate it. But uh, but I was able to do most of it for you there. So uh, that's it. Again, I, I will, I'll go through that again real quick. So you go to my code, you type in floppy.sh once you're in the floppy2 folder. It's going to download, extract. We're going to press enter, alt p. Then we can pull this out of the way. And at least on my system, uh, everything's messed up back here. I mean, I can press, start pressing down page. Uh, but to make things look proper, I just resize uh, my font over here. And now, again, I just keep holding down page, down page, down page, until you see that group of text with a CTF in it. Gotta keep going, 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 keep going. A lot of null characters in here. Some auto batch stuff from when DOSBox, I guess, uh, started running and it ran the auto batch. Uh, um, auto exit batch file whatever it was and there we go that's where you find your flag that's it i thank you for watching again this is part of a series be sure to check them all out i thank you for watching visit my website filmsbychris.com that's chris decay there's a link in the description you can search through all my videos there uh and look i have some dos exploring dos okay and uh <laughs> that's about it you can support me over at patreon.com or through PayPal here. Check out the links in the description of this video for more information. As always, I hope that you have a great day.